Good evening, folks. We're back with another episode of Three Men and an Anime. <sighs> One of these days, I'm going to, like, time it just right so that it's recording right before you say that, and I'm just finishing up saying something, like, disturbing and weird, like, and that's how I ended my career in porn. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the first time I got crabs. <laughs> So we are on episode seventy. Um, oh, yeah, it feels like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we are covering my most recent series selection, which I will f point out. Uh, I can't. I can't with listen to different shows. I want. I was thinking about doing, and was having a hard time deciding. So I threw up a poll to the uh, to the viewers on Twitter and on uh, my Discord, and the winning vote by an overwhelming majority. Uh, it was like eighty percent of the vote was for the show we covered this week, which is Mobile Fighter G Gundam. This is your fault. <laughs> well, I, I mean... Just I think we j just said it wasn't my fault. It's the audience. Eric, Gav was blaming the audience, Eric, not you. A little defensive, Eric? Everyone always talks <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, dude. <really. laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't talking about you, but if you feel that like I was, and you know, lace that bitch up and wear it all you like. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is um, the the longest series we've covered, honestly. Um, mm. Well, if you count both seasons of uh, of Code Geass, then no. Otherwise, yes. But I mean, this is this yeah. is not even broken into two seasons. This is just, this is just here are 49 episodes years. of G Gundam. Yes. Th th thanks. Um. So, G Gundam, uh, the name, if you have not watched G Gundam, um, and you are a fan of Gundam shows in general, we are not going to say don't watch this if you're a fan of Gundam shows, because that, that would be stupid. But do not go into it expecting your this traditional Gundam, Gundam series. This is Gundam in name only. This, you will either adore this show or fucking hate it, and it's tough to tell which. It is a super <laughs> robot show at its core. It is yeah, not absolutely. a real robot show. It is super see, robots. You can it, see DNA of Gundam. Oh, sure. In 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 a lot of the designs and where you know uh, suits that came before and suits that came after, but for the most part, yeah, this is not Gundam. <laughs> like this carries more in common with your standard Power Rangers clone than it does with, say, Mobile Suit Gundam this or has, HMS uh, Team. And we said it. This has more in common with the Gurren Lagann. Yeah, yes. uh, no, or no, no. like, uh, God, yeah, just, just pick any number of, there are super robots that fight in teams against each, it, oh my, it, it, yes, it is a super robot show, not a Gundam show. <laughs> now, did we enjoy this show? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, I, <laughs> I was hesitating for a moment, and I thought, you know what, <clears throat> there was enough batshit insanity, yeah, I did enjoy it. <laughs> this, yeah, if you enjoy giant robots, being absurd with absurdity and nonsense and loud shouting and explosions and this is your thing. Yeah. Uh, it, as um, an aside, apparently the voice actor in for the for the American for the English dub, the for Domon ruined his voice playing Domon. I ah. I have, can absolutely believe it. He is now I a can dentist. Buy it. I can buy it. I I should not Domon's... have laughed, but it was just like, yeah, I can totally see that. Ninety percent of Domon's lines uh, is just him screaming things. Shining finger. <laughs> it makes you wonder how the woman I... who plays Nozomi yeah. still has a vo Nozomi still has a voice from uh, from uh, from Gunbuster. Yeah, yeah, but she does. I will never get over Shining. Well, finger, no, she by had she had spoken lines. Like, he, yeah, I know. Domon is, is just just yelling. Domon has two modes, like. Uh, emo grumbling and shouting, pretty much. <laughs> Those are his two modes. <laughs> he has a few other few moments where he's not, but for the most part, yes. Domon okay. is the lead character of the show. Um, he's got about four lines, like spread between talking with Alan B and Rain, where he is actually a decent human being. But most yeah. of the rest of the time, the it is emo it, grumbling or shouting. The rest of it is <laughs> screaming people's names or screaming attack names. He has a few other conversations here and there, but for the most part, as I said, they're right. <laughs> All right, so the overall, if you like sumo robot shows, if you like, if you just like over the top insanity, the show is worth watching. It is, its pacing is a bit, a bit, a bit wonky. 
because it is 49 episodes and it does it feels it it does it's not pacing, need it's pacing is absolutely 90s anime yes yeah. that, that's it, that's the it's pacing it's 90s anime th- this is literally a case of like we need a show to fill the entire year it'll do it did it we'll give you two weeks off at christmas and new years but I, I will say, so, but overall, <laughs> I think we would all say, if you haven't seen it and don't want any spoilers or anything like that, it's worth watching. Uh, as an aside, the three-episode test is not actually valid for this show, in my no. personal opinion. No, not at no. all. This show doesn't uh, this really... This is a show to watch with friends. Yes, this I would... absolutely a show to watch with friends. That helps. Uh, the show, you get the first inkling of the actual plot of the show in episode six. Yeah. Because up until then, it looks like a tournament fight, t- t- a tournament fighting show. Then yeah. you find that there's an actual, like, actual story going on, and then the best character show shows up in episode twelve. We'll get to that. I was going to argue that, but then I realized no, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> he is undefeated, Eric. There are reasons. There are three things that, well, there's, there's, okay, no, there's four things that anyone that has never seen G Gundam knows, just through osmosis. Yes. The character you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Domon Kashu. Mm-hmm. Shining Finger. Yep. And that goddamn speech. Yes. That Domon only ever says once, and yet is quoted. Every time you go to like a convention or something, or somebody mentions G Gundam, yeah, he he uses variants on it here and there, but the, the actual speech everyone page. quotes is quoted is is in there once, once, and it's like episode six, if I remember correctly, specifically. It is, it is, yeah. it is exactly that one. Yeah, it's the this hand of mine glows with an awesome power. Its loud roar tells me to defeat you. Take this, my love, my anger, and all of my sorrow, <laughs> erupting, burning. Finger! Thank you, Gav. I had to. Yes, and Gav Something was at about eighty. Away. Was at about seventy-five percent dome on there. Yeah, I'm. I'm aware. I've got neighbors, and they're probably. Yeah. I think they're new neighbors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was about seventy-five percent dome on, and one hundred percent dome on is about eighty percent Nozomi. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just erupting, burning finger. I mean, I think they've got a crime. They've got a cream for that. <laughs> uh so. What is mobile? What is Mobile Fighter G Gundam? As I as he said. Yeah, that. that <laughs> yes, Tachi. As we said, unlike Nozomi, that is, it, it, yeah, D- no, Domon is eighty percent of no- Nozomi when he is, but that's like ninety percent of Domon. Whereas that's about sixty yeah. percent of Do- Nozomi. Uh, on this wiki page that I found, Domon has two quotes. One of them is the one I've just read. Mm-hmm. The other one. Is a variation of the one I've just read. Yeah, not surprising. <laughs> all right, so Mobile Fighter G Gundam. Um, all right, so is a Gundam series. It is on paper a Gundam series. Earth is largely abandoned. Most of humanity has moved into space into the space colonies. They are all themed after different countries on Earth. So you have Neo Japan, Neo Hong Kong, Neo China, Neo Russia. Neo USA, United States of America, Neo Mexico, etc., etc., etc. And when we say themed, we don't just mean that's where the residents of that country live. No, we mean themed like Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Neo America is just my favorite thing. It's just a big chunk of like floating, st- a floating rock shaped like a star with a gigantic statue of Liberty and Mount Rushmore. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> So uh, yeah, before we go any further, one thing to wor- or to one bit of warning to warn you about: the stereotyping in this show is fucking real. Oh Jesus Christ! And a bunch of time, it's actually just kind of fun stereotyping, but yeah. it gets a little, it gets a little, uh, uh mm, yeah, uh, more than a few yeah. times. So Danish windmills, Mexican tequila, German ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there's a German ninja in the show, and he's one of the best characters. Uh, all right, so colonies, space, Earth ruined. Now, to, and unlike most, Go- but unlike most Gundam series, not everyone's not at war currently, mm-hmm. because they've come up with a plan to avoid being at war at all times. Instead, Simple. every four years, each colony will pick one one Gundam pilot, 
give them a Gundam, send them to Earth, and there they fight. And the winner of the big fight on Earth, their country gets to be in charge for four of, of space for four years. It's an unusual election process, but far less complicated than the ones we have today. And more fair, because there's no electoral college. No, yeah. All right, I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> you are not wrong, Eric. But Moving we shall on. continue. On. But we shall move on. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, we are introduced to Domon Cashew and his engineer and partner, uh, what's her last name? Hang on. Uh, Rain. Began with an M, and it's yeah. not terribly important. Mika, Mikamura. Yeah. Mikamura, that's it. Rain Mikamura. Uh, Rain, Rain is uh, a very important character. She is A, his engineer. B, she is a... She's actually a doctor. Like, a doctor doctor. <laughs> Medical doctor. She's got a degree. Rain she, might be the most well-developed character in the show. Yeah. Rain and, is the most well-developed character in the show by a long stretch. What am I saying? Yeah. And uh, she is... Uh, she is terrifyingly smart, honestly. She's all of the competence. Yeah, she, she is, is very much. She is a licensed medical doctor and surgeon. She is also an engineer. <laughs> yeah. Domon a mechanic. Is, a mechanic. Domon is, super, Domon is the superior fighter. Rain is the everything else. Yeah. But she oh, can pilot a gun pilot, too. Because, why she, not? She's actually a decent pilot, yeah, too. <laughs> it's like, but, but what? what? What is Rain bad at? The answer is basically nothing. What Rain is bad at is picking Dolman, is what, what what she's bad right. at. Right. She has fallen for well, that's Dolman is actually a good guy at heart. He's just sure. an idiot. He's just an idiot. <laughs> an idiot that literally can only communicate his feelings through bunching. Thankfully not romantic ones, we hope. <laughs> we don't, we you know, he just he he did demonstrated that at the end of the show. It's you true. know you know when we did Build Fighters and we were laughing about Sekai and his his, his no, own no. thing about Se fighting Se everyone? Yes, Sek you know who Sekai Sensei is? Yeah. It's Domon. Yeah. Yeah. L literally, <laughs> that's heavily, actually It's heavily implied that Domon Gashu is the uh the, the school of uh, the Jigen Hao, the yeah. master. <laughs> Sekai makes a lot more sense when we realize he he learned all his mar learned everything from Domon. Yeah. Yes. All of a sudden, Sekai makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it's like, oh, you poor bastard. <laughs> and Rain wasn't around to, to teach him any goddamn common sense. She was probably busy not. being a doctor. Yes. At any rate. Um, so, Domon shows up on Earth. Uh, his, go his Gundam lands a little bit off course and lands in Rome. Uh, at any rate, actually, I'm not going to get into this. Basically, he shows up on Earth in Rome, runs into another, the other, the the Italian Gundam fighter. They fight. Domon wins. Oh, yeah. Domon has a photograph of a man and asks and as asking everybody if they've seen this man. This is That's pretty much how he. Yeah, it's pretty much how he introduces himself to everyone for a good chunk of the, so, the show. Every basically every episode for the first five episodes is Domon arrives in a new country. With the photograph, ask people who they are, find the other Gundam fighter, and they fight. This, this is... does introduce us to the other important Gundam fighters, who he we... doesn't actually beat. Because uh, then they'd be out of the Gundam he fight. He beats one of them. But he doesn't... He, he, he's, he, he beats one, but it's not an official fight. Right, that's the big thing. He beats Chibity, but it's not an official Gundam fight. You're right, you're right. Yes, he quotes regu Tachi in the chat is correct. Domon also quotes Gundam fight regulations all the time. Yes. Apparently there are very strict rules of these Gundam fights. There are fights. very strict rules during most of this. So, the first five episodes are Gundam fights. Establishing the rules of the tournament for most of the show. Um, and introducing, and introducing us, to, us to uh important recurring characters. Inter interestingly, the each of the major Gundam fighters in the first five episodes actually re are recurring characters. You don't think the first one's going to be, but he is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the uh, the three the four important ones though that are legitimately important are Chibity Crockett, who's the American Gundam pilot from the U.S. from the U Neo USA. I, I must describe these Gundams as they come up. Yes, I will just say Baxter everything... Gundam looks like a, a football player until he decides it's time to be a boxer, in which case his shoulders pads turn into boxing gloves and his chest armor falls off and now he's a boxer and he looks like a boxer also he's a pair of six shooters 
Also, he has a pair of six shooters. Also, he's, of course, red, red, white, and blue. And he has a surfboard. And he has a surfboard. That he can fly on. That's all. <laughs> that is Gunder Maxim, Ma- Maxter. Yes. Chibity also, is, a bo- is a professional boxer. He is brash, arrogant, has a squad of four women who help him out. They're his sort of support team. They're basically, they fill what Reign's, Reign's role is for Domon, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but there are four of them, and nothing, they're not as competent as, as Reign is. Because, again, there basically isn't anybody who is. Yeah. Um, except for Bunny, who is awesome, and I'll hear no, nothing oh, no, against no. Bunny. The Chibity's squad are awesome. They're all great. It's just they're not as competent as Rain. No. I will s- no I will one's say- more competent than Rain. I, I know. I, I will say as well, though, for the time that this came out and the fact that Rain's there and Chibity's squad of four, they never go to that really easy fucking trope that a lot of shows in this time period would have done. The girls never end up in, like, compromising situations. For and for the, the most, most part. You're, 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 this is true. They, it's not they, um, they are, they are characters, not not scenery. Yeah, yeah. Um, for the most part, the the women don't get damseled in the show. It happens yeah. a couple times to Rain. Um, happens once to a character that shows up in the second half. But it's yeah. It, but Rain is so competent for most of the rest of the show that I'm actually yeah. kind of forgiving of it. And mm. to be fair, some of the other Gundam fighters get damseled too. So yeah, <laughs> like the dudes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this this is the thing. It's like Rain. Like, if she was just if she was just set dressing, like stealing her was like, oh, he's stolen the the the, the lead's love interest. Well, no, no, this is though. No, she's a very competent character in her own right. She actually has skill. The fact you've managed to actually kidnap her and keep hold of her actually that makes you actually a decent villain. You know what you're doing. Yeah, and it cripples <laughs> Dolmon because he's not smart. smart. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's very much his outboard brain. <laughs> She's like a much, much nicer Loki. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Dolman's like a much, much, much nicer Thor. <laughs> but there are there, there are some similarities there. <laughs> At any rate, um the second the second Gundam pilot we meet is Sai Sai Chi, who's the Chinese Neo Chinese fighter. His Gundam is dragon themed. It is the Dragon Gundam. Um It's got dragons for arms. Yeah. And like a head scorpion, like it's got that tail monster, the, the long the, the, uh, cue that uh, but, yeah, that, that was the phrase looking for. Uh, yeah. Except that it's got a blade at the end, and he can animate it and attack with it. It's kind of awesome. Yep. Yeah, and, and he, he fights with flags. He fights with bean flags. Bean, bean banners. Flags. They're banners. Banners. You're right. Yeah, they're banners. But yeah, if you if you're familiar if you're familiar with Gundam Wing, which a lot of people in the West are, the Dragon Gun is basically the prototype for the uh, for Shenlong. the Shenlong, the Ultron. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 that thing with the extendable arms and flamethrowers and everything. Uh, I, by the, the Shenlong way, is just the Dragon Gundam with the serial numbers filed off. I, I love the <laughs> I love the Dragon Gundam. <laughs> by the way, a lot of the Gundam designs the show are fucking awesome. Yes. Yeah, they are. They're they're fairly interesting. Uh. Next up is uh, George Desand. Um, he's the French Gundam pilot. He is all of our least favorite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, he's he's an aristocrat. He's sworn to serve the princess of Neo France. His Gundam is actually fairly interesting looking. It's got like a weird sort of like matador crest on it. Um, has a, a series of shields down the left side that look almost like a half clo- cloak. But these open up to fire funnels, little like laser drones that are shaped like uh, roses. Yes, and he calls them rose bits. And it fights with his sword. He fights with a, like, he, a he rapier. Has a beam rapier. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> um, George is the least interesting of the major Gundam fighters. It's he is just very because yeah, his, he... his his motivations and his character are very generic. It's the usual foppish aristocratic, you know, I will fight for honor and I will do this, this, and the other for the, for the honor and love of my beloved and, you know, so, yeah, whatever. He's not a bad character, but yeah, he's, he's not a bad character. The problem is generic. he is surrounded by these gigantic personalities. Yes. Yeah. Because, like, Domon thing- is an idiot, oh. but he, dear lord, he is bo- loud and brash and oh, holy crap. And, and uh, Sai Sai Chi is basically Son Goku. <laughs> To a degree, yeah. He's I mean, if you've ever brother. seen like Journey to the West or Reddit or seen any of the ten thousand different movies or spoofs on it, that's mm-hmm. that, that's uh, 
that, that size Haichi right there. Yeah. He's the Except for the giant robot. He's he's a mischievous little brother. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, this is the thing. Like the most interesting thing about George is that he's piloting Napoleon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the fourth one is Eric's favorite of the four, <laughs> and probably and, and my second actually. I I'm, I've got a big big soft spot for Saizichi actually. Aldo Gorski. Argo Ar Argo. Argo Golski. Argo Golski. Yes. yes. Um, Argo's this giant like brick of a man, and he uh he's he works Neo for Neo Russia. Yes. He is not from Neo Russia. He is a space pirate that got captured. And now they're using him as sort of like an indentured soldier in the Gundam fight, holding his, the the lives of his uh, crew over his head. Him and his li the lives of his crew. <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, yes. He's got a he's got a bomb on his chest. Now he's got a happy harness of the bomb on his chest. He would, <laughs> if it wasn't for that, his crew is being held prisoner and he cares about his crew. He would probably say, "Yeah, fucking blow me up. I'm not gonna fuck you guys." Yeah, but it, he what he cares about is getting his crew out. So. And he's got the my favorite Gundam, which is the Bolt Gundam. It's pretty awesome. Which, uh, which is sort of this big chunky thing with um like solid lots of solid plates and and big, uh big shoulder pads and everything and almost like um a Nubushka, uh head on it. And um one of the shoulder pads shoots this giant ball and chain at you, which he then wields, and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, he, he basically the shoulders have actual like full wrecking balls in them that he can launch. And if he pulls out his beam handle, which looks like a beam saber, but no, it's a beam chain, which grabs hold of the ball and he's got a wrecking ball. Yeah. yeah. Because, sure, why not? And he's probably got the most subdued design of the, the primary Gundams. Yep. In it's fact, just, he absolutely does. He does. But it's just, ready. it's just chunk. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's just pure malevolent chunk. So yeah, he is he is the brute force character of the, of the, of the five. And he doesn't have a lot of lines. He doesn't say much. He says a lot with his eyebrows. Yeah, a yeah. and dirty looks. But he has a bunch well, of good. He has some really good moments too. Like in yes. his dialogue, he's a really cool character. He, he's a he's a great character. He's um, he's probably the most principled uh, of the Gundam fighters. Which is which is amusing because he's a pirate. But yes, which is great because he's a pirate. <laughs> he's very much a cinematic pirate, as an aside. He's not a real. Yeah. Word. Real world pirates are nothing like that. <laughs> and his handler, um, Natasha, just pushes some buttons for me. Let me just point. Natasha that out. is pretty. Is yeah, yeah. I totally get that. <laughs> I mean, Eric, she's got a mil. You know, a, she's she's a she's an attractive woman, but she's in the military, a Russian military uniform, and has a riding crop. I am not surprised. I might have buttons. watched a couple <laughs> movies in my formative years that may have informed this. So, <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> So yes, in episode six, we are introduced. Domon is after meeting after meeting and fighting these guys. Domon is whisked back to Neo Neo Japan for uh, to so that we can find out the plot. <laughs> yes. Now, one thing we have forgotten actually though is we've gone through all these different Gundams, but we haven't mentioned the main one. Oh yes, the Shining Gundam, Gun uh, Domon's Sh Gundam. <laughs> Not the one on the picture there. Oh, uh, that's the God uh, Gundam. That's the that's God, a God Gundam. Gundam. That comes later. Yes. The Shining Gundam is just this. This is your generic. This is where it looks like Gundam. The the, the the Shining Gundam is everything that Gundam should be: red, white, and blue. The huge shoulders, the the skirt armor, and just this. You know the the, 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 the gold the, crest on the, the forehead. The gold crest on the head. That that is the the you know the Gundam. And the shining finger that everyone talks about is literally its hand will literally glow red as a heat weapon in its hand. And just melt faces. Yes, Domon... he gives you the world's most unpleasant wet willy. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Domon, him, Domon himself is a phenomenal martial artist. Is the big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason he got picked as the um, the Gundam fighter for Japan is because he recently won an actual martial arts tournament. Yes, he is now uh, the king of hearts, and he is the disciple of a very, very, very well known martial artist who we will get to mm -hmm. later. <laughs> well, we should point out that the cockpits for these are not your standard like giant robot cockpits. No, they are not. These are no. these are Tybo spheres. They they like put a leotard on you with like the the sensors on it, like literally like it like stretching a saran wrap over you with the, these big rings, and then you you basically just do the thing you want the Gundam to do. 
again, but it's fact, more, again, it's more super robot. We've we've seen it in we've we saw that kind of thing in, in Build Fighters, in fact. Um, well, no, yep. really, no, kind of I suppose. They they had the control panel in front of them, didn't they? Um, but we saw it's the same sort of thing as in uh, Gunbuster. Yeah, yeah. The 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 sphere where like it's it just mimics their physical movements. So you know, it's not an actual like in a cockpit sort of thing. But it, again, that's that's where it leads. It's more towards the super robot show yes. than it does the Gundam thing. So having a having a badass martial artist pilot your your robot makes it better at more at, at punching and kicking and shit. Yes, and, and boy howdy does it. <laughs> 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 and that's the whole thing about going for the head that, 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 that was what I mentioned there the Doman quoting the rules um, if you destroy the head you win, you're not allowed to target the cockpit and for those that don't know in most Gundams the cockpit's actually in the chest you mean the logical place to put it if, there, if, there's, not a power, if there's not a fusion reactor there yeah. yeah, basically, yes Well, the, um... there's much, the place where you've got as much armor and stuff around, you, around the yeah. pilot uh, the, the cockpit for mobile suits has always been in the chest if I remember correctly yes. Apart from the Sazabi, I believe, uh, there is one or two that are in the head. In fact, there's a, there's one or two in this show that are in the head. I think the uh, the uh, George's butler's um, old-style mech is, yes. has the cockpit in the head. But, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The one that actually looks like a butler with clamp hands. Yes. Yes. Give him the clamps. <laughs> but it's a big thing because they basically say, you know, again, one of the regulations, you are not allowed to aim for the cockpit, so body shots tend not to happen as much. You've got to go for the head. Right. Which is a great rule they put in place, only to use it as a way of shocking later, which no one really cares about because no one dies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At any rate, so um, <laughs> we get to space, back in the back at the colony, and Domon is being forced to relive uh, a moment in his life that didn't actually happen. Um, well, he wasn't there for it. Basically, we get to see the his, basically we get to see the backstory of the show, which is. Uh, his older brother, who is the dude in the photo, Kyoji, uh, his dad and his mom are... His dad is apparently a, a brilliant scientist. Brilliant engineer, scientist, Gundam designer. And Kyoji is, wor is helping, working with him. And they've been developing this super, this super Gundam thing. <laughs> Which apparently, turns out, is evil! It is the Devil Gundam. Now, that, that is literally its name. It, that, we're not joking, it's the Devil Gundam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Domon's dad was unaware of this. Kyoji apparently had built an evil Gundam with which he was going to conquer the world. <laughs> I will rule the universe with my devil Gundam. So, you know, the near Jap Japanese military shows up to, take, to arrest him before he can use it. But, oh no, he saw them coming and activated the devil Gundam. And Domon's mom gets shot by accident and, Kyo and Kyoji steals the devil Gundam. And then we have a, this bit with, you know... Domon sort of, you know, being part of the force that tried to stop it, and it failed. That didn't actually happen. This is this is all sort of a holographic sort of, you know, it's sort of a psych, it's sort of a psychedelic thing to. It's a holodeck th effectively to yeah. get Domon to to sort of, you know. I mean, we get a scene where Rain is talking to her father, saying how cruel it is to submit Domon to this because he's literally they've they've literally drugged him and are, are making him hallucinate. The uh, worst you know, day in his that, life. That he, that he wasn't there for. Yeah. That, like his, his dad is now in cryostasis for crimes of, of building the, the Devil Gundam. And call, you know, and, and attributing to all this. And they're now trying to hunt Kyoji down. His brother has gone evil and has to be killed, and his mom is dead. Hooray! Yeah. So and, we find out about the Devil Gundam, which changes form several times over the course of the series. Yes. Um, the Devil Gundam the has moment, a couple of very important abilities. Yes. Yes. Um, One, it self repairs. Two, two, it, it infects um, other people with DG cells, Devil Gundam cells. Yep. Well, that's part of its replication. That's the self replicate. That's the self replication. Yeah. Yep. Self replication. And three, it evolves. This all seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> this this thing should not have gotten off the fucking design. But uh, you know the the the. the drawing when we board. find out what it was designed for, I can understand the logic behind it. Yes. Um, at the same time, I would totally build a devil Gundam, given the opportunity. <laughs> yes, Eric, you would. No, you wouldn't. I am not a that. responsible actually, giant robot actually, no, owner. No, no, I was, I was about to say, no, you wouldn't. It hasn't got enough legs, and then I realized, actually, yes, in base form it does. It, sev and several it. times it does, in fact, have enough legs. Yeah, we just don't <laughs> see it in its base form, yeah. So, yeah, and Domon <laughs> is basically... 
the government basically said, yeah, we're fairly sure your dad didn't know, but someone's got to be held accountable. But if you'll if you'll ju- become a become the gun fighter for Japan and hunt your brother down and kept and stop the, the the devil Gundam for us, we'll let your dad out of cryostasis. And you know, that, isn't that cool? And Dolman's like, fine, I'll do it. Yeah. And you know, his, and Rain, who is his childhood friend, um, because you know Dolman's dad and Rain's dad were were friends and colleagues. Uh, she's basically si- assigned as his handler, basically. But again, also because she's a genius and is a brilliant, is an engin- is capable of doing the engineering stuff. So, and she is totally not in love with Dolman. She's totally in love with Dolman. <laughs> I mean, the two of them are basically it, there's. It is very much unrequited love. It is very much they can't acknowledge that they're in love with each other for basically most of the show. But I mean, with Dolman, obviously, yeah, but. <laughs> He doesn't have any big realization, so you get the idea that he knew the whole time. You know, it's it's been there all along. But he has absolutely no vision for anything other than tracking down his brother for the for the longest time. Like he, it's not that he's not aware of Rain, but he just does not see that side of it at yeah. that point, at least. Now, Domon is laser focused on stopping his brother. Once he has stopped his brother and gotten his dad of cryostasis, then he has time for other stuff. But until then, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, as the show progresses and we get more tournament arcs and so stuff, at this we... point, yeah, basically, then back to Earth, more Gundam fights. Yep. Mostly, we, we meet... see people from other countries. Domo shows up and runs into one of the four we've we've already run into. Yep. During all of this, we are introduced to. The German pilot, Schwarz Bruder. That's not telegraphing anything. It telegraphs absolutely nothing, Eric. I have no idea what you're talking uh, about. Foreshadowing. That never happens. <laughs> he's a German ninja. L- literally, he he's a ninja. Yeah. And he's working for Germany. And he's totally... He wears a ninja German. mask and everything. It's mm-hmm. got the German flag on it. And he wears a trench coat. <laughs> he wears this, like, big, like pseudo Prussian great coat like you'd see in the trenches in World War One. It's amazing. I love <laughs> his character the best design. Fucking coat. <laughs> I love his character design. I love it to pieces. Oh. Uh and his Gundam is the <clears throat> The Spiegel Gundam. The Spiegel Gundam Spiegel. Gundam Spiegel. Uh if you know German, Spiegel means mirror or reflection. This, 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 there's no about, foreshadowing Gav. here, at Eric, Eric, Gav. Not, none at all. Stop, stop no. saying, stop implying that. Foreshadowing does not exist. The end. Period. <laughs> By the way, this show is really subtle. Yeah. Never saw it coming. <laughs> this show. Okay. It all says this show is about as subtle as a brick through a plate glass window. I'm going to be perfectly honest. This show makes Gurren Lagann seem subdued. <laughs> it has none of Gurren Lagann's, like, absolute fucking glee at what it's doing. But Gurren Lagann comes, it just feels subdued and sophisticated compared to a lot of the time. <laughs> uh, the part of the thing is that it, it is not as... The, mobile, uh, G Gundam is not as gleeful as Gurren Lagann, but it yeah. is it is so earnest. Uh, mm. Absolutely. Yeah. It is... So absolutely convinced that this is awesome, and it wants you to understand that this is awesome. Why don't you think it's awesome? I'll make you understand my feelings with my fist. <laughs> so yes, we go through. We meet a bunch of we meet a bunch of the fighters, and eventually Domon ends up going to to Neo Japan to to going to, to not to Neo Japan to Tokyo, where shit is going down, and they run into a bunch of these you know. Weird Gundams that don't really seem to have pilots or anything like that look kind of like Zaku, but not really. They are they they are the derpiest of Zaku. We've also have spider uh, legs, which is pretty cool. By this point, we've also again met up with a couple of the the other pilots as well and been introduced to the effects of what Eric was saying earlier, the DG cells, yes. these thing, these infectious yeah. cells. So we've met like the Faro Gundam, which largely looks fucking amazing, but it's been infected and it's now a mummy Gundam because yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And various other things along those lines. Yeah, we're, we're we getting so we're getting stuff the DG cell stuff now. We're finding out more about the the double Gundam and ooh, we're now actually on the trail of the double Gundam, but during the Gundam fights. 
Yes. And the these 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 death gun the the death the death what are they the death Gundam? Uh, the 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 army of death. Army of death. Yeah, the army of death are these uh, crappy crappy. They're basically not. They're they're not Gundams. They're they're mobile suits. Let, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> um. And, but there's a horde of them, and they're attacking like you know the col- the, the the people who are living in the Tokyo Tower. Everything's ruined. And when we run into a dude with a scarf, kicking kicking mobile suits asses. <laughs> don't don't get your robot, mind you. No power suit. Asia. No power suit. No like r- power armor. No jump pack. Not even so much as a pair of brass knuckles. But he's making them explode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's the, as Gab said, he's the undefeated of the East, Master Asia. Oh, dear. Master was, Asia yeah. is the best character in the show. Fight Master me. Asia is definitely the best character in the show. <laughs> the <laughs> show became about 100% better in episode 12. Yes. Yes. He is every Hong Kong action movie old master amplified to 11. Yeah. By the way, this is also when the when all when the last remaining breaks on the show's absurdity have been removed. Yes. yes. We are now into the we're now on the roller coaster. We're going downhill. Yeah. And I mean, where the ride when, has started. <laughs> even when Master Asia does reveal his Gundam, which he has a Gundam because of course he does. Uh he's the current Gundam, you know, the Gundam by champion. That's why is it Hong Kong? Yep, New Hong Kong uh, is is currently the uh, you know the, the the ruling party. Yeah, his Gundam also fights using a scarf. Yes, yes, a beam scarf. A beam scarf. <laughs> Master Age is the goddamn best, <laughs> but he doesn't need it. Well, he he needs it against Gundam. Yeah, against, against the Gundam army of death, it. he can beat them up without them, without it. <sighs> hang on, hang on, hang on, no. Okay, I was just looking through the wiki, and I I need to, I need to read this for the most fucking obvious. You know how we've just been talking about Schwartz. Yeah. And I'm sorry if you're listening to this and you still haven't gotten the joke yet, but <laughs> this comment: Schwartz Bruder's name in German literally translates to "black brother." That may have been included as a clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think. The show is very subtle. <laughs> very, very subtle. <laughs> if you believe that, I have several bridges to sell you. <laughs> yes. At any rate. <laughs> so yes, we are into inter- we're into the forces of the Devil Gundam. And it's hiding beneath it's hiding in under the ground in Neo Tokyo. And oh god! All the people that we that we used to like, that all the, uh, the 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 four other Gundam fighters we like are here, and they've been corrupted by the Devil Gundam. No, and it turns out, oh no, Master Asia is actually working with the Devil Gundam. Oh no! By the way, if you didn't see that coming, you have not watched enough martial arts movies, uh, <laughs> especially considering he literally like he's got like the white ponytail and the white eyebrows. He's got the fucking white eyebrows. <laughs> he's I mean, the evil old master, yes, Eric. <laughs> The, 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 the more grim part of it that actually wasn't so much telegraphed but kind of obvious when you think about it is that this this death army of, of mobile suits um, the, the the devil Gundam might have infected them but they still need pilots the zombified and, and basically husks just yeah. wired into the machine but that's the population of Tokyo yeah. sorry Neo Tokyo yeah no Hooray! no it's Tokyo Tokyo it's just Tokyo <laughs> yeah <laughs> Neo Tokyo. Neo Tokyo is in Neo Japan, up in space. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. Yep. Oh god. So I'm yeah. Thinking, um. New things. Yeah. Master Asia is working with the with, working for the Devil Gundam, and Kyoji. Oh no. And the zombie army. And things are looking bad when um. Okay, th- this is the one part of the show that really just doesn't work, in my opinion, but it's really important. Is the problem. <laughs> When out of the sky comes the Shuffle Alliance. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, dear. All right, the so... Worst-looking mobile suits in the fucking history of anything. They, 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 they were not trying. They, they were not trying, and honestly, they were... They might be the worst-looking giant robots I've seen coming out of anything. They're, they're That's massive. including GoBots. Yeah. Don't you just GoBots? GoBots are pretty lame, Gav. I like GoBots. 
Well, you're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> At any rate, to be fair, Psykill is pretty baller. Psykill is cool. <laughs> so, at any rate, the important thing is that they are basically this. The, the Shuffle Alliance are a bunch of Gundam pilots who exist to make sure the Gundam fight is done honorably and nobody does anything really, really awful. Like, this is to basically, yeah, we're trying to avoid actual warfare. So we're going to make sure we have, we have a group of actual dedicated gun fighters who have decided that we're going to observe things and make sure that, you know, shit is being done the right way, TM. Yeah, it's not so much about the, like, the, the regulations at Domon. You know, the, the, you know if, if somebody does something that's against the regulations, that'll get reported and it'll, it'll get, you know, dealt right. with by the official committee or whatever. The Shuffle Alliance are more the ones that, like, are the ones that are supposed to get involved when somebody's clearly cheating in a different way that you know like they're they're rigging the game to their advantage or they're interfering with the fights they're they're interfering with the, sp the, the when the spirit of the Gundam fights are being violated yeah despite the fact we've already met the british competitor and they didn't step in there but you know well he yeah. was he was being sneaky or something i don't know well mm. he's being sneaky for this show yeah fistfuls yeah, of no. amphetamines literal fistfuls of amphetamines <laughs> yeah <laughs> So at any rate, they show up to basically. Now, Master Asia was a was a, is a mem was it was a it was a member of the Shuffle Alliance. The whole King of Hearts thing, yeah, they all have a different card suit thing. And there's the the Black Joker, the King of Hearts, the Jack of Diamonds, Queen of Spades, and those the Ace of Spades and the Queen of Clubs, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, um. They show up to basically say, no, no, Master Asia, stop being evil. And Master Asia going, nope, don't wanna. <laughs> now, well, now we have to fight. And now we fight. And they fight. And, but, you know, Master Asia has on his side the, you know, the, let's just say, wait, there are four of them from other, from a bunch of different countries who are friends with Domon, and Domon is the new King of Hearts. Nothing is going, there's no telegraphy going on here whatsoever. Nope. So, yeah, uh, basically, he, the fight does not go particularly well for the basically so the shuffle eyes fights the are 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 you know domon's quote buddies who've been uh, devil devil you know decelified uh while domon tries to go after master asia everything's going badly and as they're fighting the shuffle alliance realize hey wait a minute these four they have the spirit they have the spirit of the of the shuffle alliance they should be the new generation but they've been corrupted well, we will use our power to to re to remove the G. The we will sacrifice ourselves to. We have this power to sacrifice ourselves to undo the corruption on them because that makes sense and is explained and is hinted at. Or uh, that, no, that's just out of no fucking nowhere. Yeah, that's some fucking Zod on shit right there. It's just and uh, no, you guys are now the the other four Rangers. Good luck. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you no longer are affected by the by the Devil Gun themselves, and you now have the crests, and we're dead. Yeah. Yep. We out. <laughs> Wait, what? What? I but what? And they fight. Short Short's Bruder shows up to help out, etc. But you know, no one is unable to defeat Master Asia before Master Asia gets away. With the and, Master Gundam, with which has wings, because it's awesome. Yes, the Master Gundam is pretty fucking sweet. Well, yeah, I mean, it has wings that it wears around itself like a cloak most of the time. Yes, it's, it's like, so oh, cool. Right. <laughs> the big thing is that his, other, his actual original gun is also badass. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. So, yeah, he 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 buggers, he, he takes off. Which leads to Domon realizing, I need to train. But actually, mostly it's Schwartz going, Domon, you suck. You can't beat the, you can't beat him as it stands. Go, here, have this rusty sword. Where you can cut a tree in half with a rusty sword, then you'll be powerful enough to take on Master Asia. Oh, all right. I'll go back to where I trained on in the in. in <laughs> go back to where I trained with Master Asia on Earth and learn and become better at martial arts. So now we have a training arc, which is mostly Domon training with on his own with Rain, and then the other other fighters showing up to you know, because they need something fight for reasons. Mostly so they can get by the PTSD of being being taken over by the Devil Gundam. Honestly, yeah, that, that, that is yeah. true. It is pretty dramatic to have your brain taken over by a cybernetic death machine. Yeah. The one who handles it best claws. is unsurprisingly Argo. Uh, yeah. Well, Argo's just like, huh, well, that's a problem. Probably go punch Dome on a couple times. Yeah, that worked. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so they all develop new moves and such and blah, 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 blah. And it's time to fight the Devil Gundam. Hooray! So they fight the Devil Gundam. 
and Master Asia, and stuff happens, and eventually, yes, Domon wins. Domon manages, with the help of the Shuffle Alliance, basically buying him time, he actually takes out the Devil Gundam. Hooray! Master Asia defeated, the Devil Gundam is destroyed. But not before, not before, Shining Gundam is, uh, is literally gutted, but he manages to climb back, it, climb into the God Gundam, which is literally dropped via Space Marine drop pod at his feet. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they, they... I'm not even kidding. It looks exactly like a Space Marine drop pod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a great scene with the two Gundams as, as like Shining Gundam crawls up to it. And I'm just like, kiss. You guys have to kiss. <laughs> oh, right. That's actually important because yeah. the fight's going on while the everyone's getting ready for the actual big, the main tournament. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Dolmon's basically late leaving and he's got to get to uh, Ho uh, Hong Kong to, to compete, but he's currently still, uh, still so, there. So yeah, basically because, what was going yeah. to happen, I, I remember now, I actually misspoke a bit, a little bit. So basically what was going to happen was, what happens is the Devil Gundam attacks, and they instead of, they say, well, we can't beat it here, so we'll try to escape. They come up with a plan to escape, and they escape, except Dolmon stays behind to fight the Devil Gundam. Because it's Dolmon. Because it's Dolmon. And, and he wins. Dolmon translates to dumbass. He does win. Yes, and then they do. New Japan drops the God Gundam because, like, well, okay, we maybe this Domo needs help. We're going to drop the the God Gundam. He's, he, you know, we're going to do this. Rain is stuck on the transport going back, so Rain uh, realizes, okay, well, Domo's got the God Gundam, but it doesn't have his specs, so it's not tuned for him to fight in it. Yeah, Fuck. he's he's literally sitting in it and hitting the levers. It's like, why is nothing happening? Why can't I control this? It's not connecting to my suit it's what's going on so and, rain uh, gets a little sort of a little brain connector thingy that connects it to connects her to the shining gundam forcing it to crawl to donum and so she can use it to tr use it to transfer its specs to the god gundam all the, yep. the all the fighting data all the control basically domon can't fight in anything that doesn't have his controller mapped to it <laughs> that's what that, that's basically what they do they well the problem is that over. the god gundam just basically has nobody's specs at all no, it's yeah. it's a it's a bear, it's, it's a, a blank, blank slate currently. Yeah, it has no fighting specs at all. Like you could dump someone else's fighting specs in and go and probably could pilot it. it, just wouldn't be as efficient. It is. I got the impression that, that the fighting specs are basically because the the Gundams had a, a learning algorithm to figure out how to optimize the the fighters. Basically, basically, yeah, yeah. So you know, the God Gundam has start over of, with the God Gundam. The God Gundam is but, literally not set up for anybody to pilot. It is the problem. The, the God Gundam is level zero. Shining Finger is level 32. Right. But you can make God Gundam 32 by transferring the specs from God Gundam. Right. From Shining And so, yeah. Yeah. So Rain crawls, Rain has to crawl up, and it's actually a very cute scene, honestly. And Eric's right. They, they look like the two Gundam are about to kiss. They do, they do they have kiss. a little... They Robot have a little, kiss. They do have a little bit where they kind of tease where the, where the Master Asia is going to jump and steal the God Gundam. Right. Um, but they never really pay off on that or even, like, attempt to go for it after, after a certain point. And, uh, and yeah, but that this Come is on. all happening after the Devil Gundam was defeated because yes. Goman defeated the Devil Gundam in Shining Gundam. Yes, yes. but and Shining Gundam school. get that Master Asia then pissed off wrecks Domon, but gets wrecked back. Yes. The two of them basically kick each other's ass and are basically like, oh, fuck, we're both dead. And then the God Gundam drops and Master Asia's like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, Domon gets act the Shining Gundam activates and he is able to get back to the tournament on time, so he's not disqualified. And it looks like Master I mean, Asia is dead. Well, yeah, but because, I mean, once he gets in the God Gundam, <laughs> Doma, and, and this is the point, Master Asia at this point, because his Gundam his, does have D G cells in it, has repaired itself. So it's it's back to full strength, and God Gundam fucking clowns him. Yep. To the point where when Domon leaves, his finishing move is turns around and fires his engines in his face. Yeah. So yes, it looks like Master Asia's dead. Domus defeated the, Ma the, the Devil Gundam. Hooray! He's never coming back. By the way, we are about two thirds of the way through the show at this point. <laughs> Devil Gundam's done. Master Asia's done. They're never coming back. Yep, it's it's over. Yeah, we've just got fifteen episodes left. So yeah, now we have the actual big Gundam fight tournament, and uh, for some reason it's being run by Mister Chang from Black Lagoon. We don't yeah, know why, but he is. Yeah, the 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 dude for the head of the the head of of Neo Hong Kong is uh, yeah yeah he looks exactly like Chang from Black Lagoon. Yeah, he's not he's, he's not got just, the round glasses. He's wearing the trench coat over uh over his shoulders. We have no evidence that he dual wields pistols, and he's nowhere near as cool. 
I don't know, when you've got yourself a literal floating command throne, and you basically just hang out all day in your giant robot death like, set, drinking with your evil minions, come up with crazy plans, that's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> he's not He's not Cheng, he, he's Cheng's brother who idolized M. Bison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> So we now have the next tournament arc. And if you thought things were silly up to now... <laughs> oh, we start getting some of the really silly Gundam now. Mermaid Gundam. Oh, the fucking Gotta Nether Gundam. <laughs> the, Gundam. The, 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 the Dutch Gundam. Oh, is a goddamn it's windmill. It's has got the light. blades in the chest. You'd think they put it on the back so I could use it like a jetpack or something. Nope, it's in the chest. It just gets in the way of their arms all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the Matador Gundam is just a bull's head. Yep. yep. Uh, Zeus Gundam is actually pretty cool. Zeus, Zeus Gundam, Gundam is pretty is cool. cool. The, um, the Mandela Gundam. Gundam. Is... <laughs> this is the fucking Mermaid Gundam, which looks like a dude. You know those dudes that spin signs outside of delis? Yeah. It looks like it looks like one of those in a fucking fish costume. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but we the are Mandela inter- Gundam, which is just like the, the the big like bronze Mandela bell with a Gundam torso on top and like floppy rope arms. <laughs> They're prayer beads. <laughs> You're right, they are prayer beads. The Cobra Gundam. <laughs> cobra, which is actually pretty cool, because yep. it's a giant cobra. Uh, That's and eventually we are introduced one. to the other great Gundam in the show. Nobel yes. Gundam. Nobel Gundam. The Nobel Gundam is... is Neo Sweden's Gundam. It is, a, it, like... it is basically Shining Gundam if it was Sailor Moon. Yes. Yeah. The fact that that's the thing. The, the the Sailor Gundam is one thing. The fact that it actually looks like it shares design specs with Shining Gundam is the other. It's like, like it is brilliant. It is legitimately a cool looking robot. I. It, it really does is. the fucking Sailor Moon pose all the time with the crossed <laughs> legs and that. The, it fights the with a sign over it, one eye. It fights with a fucking uh, gymnastics ribbon. Yes, it's and here's the thing: it's fucking badass. It It is a fucking murder. It's got a berserker mode. (laughs) Oh my god, we all okay. Here's the thing: we all unironically love Nobel Gundam, and we all unironically love its pilot, Alan B. Beardsley, which is not a Swedish name. Jesus Christ. So I was angry that Alan B. had knocked, um, might have knocked Argo out of the the fight. I was like, well, fuck this chick. God damn it, stop making me like her, show. Stop making me like her. <laughs> but it turned out Argo was not knocked out of the show, so Eric didn't have no. to feel that bad about it. So Eric could then feel good about the fact that she was making me like making it like Allenby. Allenby is probably the second most skilled martial artist in the entire fucking tournament behind Domon. Mm-hmm. Allenby is a fucking stone cold badass. Yeah. Like we meet her like when we first meet her, there's there's basically in one of the arcades or the the nightclubs, they've got this thing set up which is basically just two two Gundam cockpits um, or like you know virtual versions of them not connected to anything but literally just like a VR system so you can fight against other people and Alan B's, basically there's been like a winner stays on kind of situation going on all night and no one could touch Alan B. she's in there and she's like who's next just keep them coming and that's where Domon meets her and they fight to a draw yeah and then, you know, the, the, the machine explodes. explodes because... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Alan B is legit. She is she is legit a well-done character. They do a lot of development for her in almost zero time. Yeah. We were... And you know what? We were... We were we all, I think we all agreed on this point also. We really wish she'd been in more of the show. Yeah. Yes. Honestly, if you, get, if you ran this by a decent editor, she would be in about two-thirds. Yeah. Even three quarters of the show. She's great. She's legit a great character. Her character design, honestly, like, she, her character design feels like it's a little bit visually different than a lot of the rest of the characters. And it really feels like it was done by the person who did the character designs for Slayers. Yeah. She's got that sort of, sort of rubbery body, that sort of rubbery, sort of, you know, stretchy. She's got the weird sort of. She's got the, the, the really slim build of, like, Lena Ernverse. She has the, sort of that, the, the bump, that the bouncy, almost like rubber band school animation yeah. way of moving. And, like, there's just something about her that just feels like she belongs in the Slayers. I don't know what it is. Mm. Well, it's, it's, in terms of the, her character, the way her character is designed and animated. Yeah. The way she acts, she is she's a G-Gundam character through and through. 
Oh, absolutely. You know the thing that the thing that I really liked though is how like mature of a character she is because mm-hmm. you know it, it's it's an anime. She's like she's meant to be like seventeen, and yes, she does become a technical love interest for Domon, or rather, she has interest in him. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, she, she see she herself sees Rain as a bit of a rival, but it never gets to that like childish high school kind of rivalry that you see in a lot of shows. It's like. It's like, no, she's looking in from afar. It's like, well, if Rain's not going to take him, I'm going to have a shot. But, uh, okay, they're, they're involved. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother that. She's so mature about it. Yeah, yeah. she basically is like, yeah, I like, I really, I like, I fall in love with Domon. He and Rain are a thing. Like, they're not officially a thing, but they're a yeah. thing. Right, there's fine. A, a I'll just be Ro- Domon's friend because he's awesome. I, I'm awesome. We, we have awesome martial arts fights. Fuck. There's yeah, that's con- cool. Th- there's a confrontation later on between her and Rain, and, and she literally just says to Rain, look, will you pull your head out your ass and, and, like get serious with him so I can fucking move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, all right. This is like, yeah. If if you two are actually hooked up, it's like, yeah, great, cool. They're definitely a thing. I know. I don't. I know. I don't have to even think about this anymore. I can completely just say, yep. I Domon is just a friend now, definitively, for good. I'm cool with that. Because again, it's very clear she is. Totally okay with the the concept that Domon is my friend, and Rain. Yep. And the other thing is, she likes Rain, yeah. because Rain is kind of hard not to like. She's awesome. Mm. Allenby's great. Oh, the other big thing is that so, as the the shuffle lies develop their new super moves because they all develop new super moves. Yeah. Uh, and we should mention um, Master Asia is not dead. Oh no, he shows he's up. In fact, working he, with Chang. He's working with Chang. Um, he, shows, he shows up, he shows riding up on a white zone. Gundam on a white Gundam unicorn. Yep. It should be. And I don't mean like the unicorn Gundam from the, from from Gundam unicorn. I mean it's a Gundam shaped like a unicorn. It is piloted Funsaki. by a horse. Funsaki, yes, it is piloted by Master Asia's horse Funsaki. It does he the whole d- d- Tybo Sphere suit. suit thing. It did. Yep. <laughs> it's a show, man. King this amazing. show. This is not a normal horse by any length. Of no, the, of, of the world no, it's a super horse. I'm pretty sure it's actually his paladin mount. I'm just gonna put it out there. Basta Asia has enough levels in paladin to have his magic space horse. Sure, why not? <laughs> At any rate, here's the big thing. So yes, Domon declares that basically, you know, he Master Asia basically they explain the new rules of the tournament is basically we're, you guys are gonna fight until we have a, a get down to a certain number, and then we're, we're gonna have a big battle royal on that island over there. And Master Asia will be there with you. So in, on the in the in the battle royale, because he's the champion, he doesn't have to go through the, the, the stages. That's actually semi reasonable. Oh, and you can target the cockpit now. Wait, what? This does. Oh, not so I'm just gonna make different rules during each fight because I can because I'm the commissioner, and no one could tell me no because then they'd have to try to take away my kick ass floating throne, and they can't because it's too awesome. Yeah. I'm pretty sure those lines are actually uttered at some point. <laughs> they aren't, but they might as well be. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. So we eventually realize that yes, uh, Neo Hong Kong has acquired the rem- the the dead Devil Gundam, and basically, okay. So the clearly Master Asia has a plan. He Master Asia is planning to have Domon do something with the Devil Gundam. And Chang basically is like, mm, kind of take this Allenby chick for it instead. But eventually, and, you know, so, but Domon declares he will fight Master Asia, and in doing, and to prove that he is wor- definitely worthy of fighting Master Asia one-on-one, he's not going to lose a single fight during the preliminaries. Which, you know, pisses off basically all the other fighters, because, you know. Well, yeah. Now, does Domon lose a single fight during the preliminaries? Of course, fucking not. No. <laughs> but yeah, when he when he gets to the fights against his the Shuffle Lines guys, they all demonstrate their their new special moves, except for Sai Chi because he's the smartest of the bunch. Uh, <laughs> so Sai like, yeah, I'm not gonna show you the special. I, neither he nor actually no. I'm I sit corrected actually. Chippity shows him the moves. This his super move. George shows him his super move. Outside of their Gundam, they they demonstrated out because they, they they can do it physically because that's how this works. Uh, Sai Sai Chi is all like, yeah, no, I'm not going to demonstrate anything. He almost accidentally shows it to Alan B when they're sparring. Um, uh, 
Uh, and Argo's like, yeah, no, no, I'm not. That would be stupid. Why would That's I do that? Stupid. I'm not going to show it to you. <laughs> yeah. Why would I do Argo, that? Once again, the smart one. But so through all, his tra- Domon spends a lot of time training with Allenby, and she basically is doing the stand-in for the Shuffle Lines people, mimic their mimicking their damn moves. Rain is uh, Allenby is fucking terrifying. <laughs> I mean, when we say mimicking their moves, they find out that Chibody's, like, he can throw, like, rapid-fire punches, so she uses the Noble Gundam to cause a rock slide. Yeah. <laughs> for, him, for him to dodge, for Domon to dodge. It's like, all right. Well, yeah, she Very simulates good. the, the rose bit thing with the with her ribbon. I mean, like, she does, she's yeah. doing really creative shit to do this. And she is basically pushing Domon to the edge constantly because she's that damn good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so yeah, big, so unsurprisingly, the big, you know, we eventually get to the big fight on the island. Uh, and you know, shock of shocks, it turns out, uh, <laughs> the Devil Gundam's there, and this is all a plan to resurrect the Devil Gundam. Dun dun dun. And oh no, oh, Allenby's been kidnapped. And is being being controlled by by Chang, and she is being forced into berserker mode against her will. And Rain That's basically, sh- we also then find out that basically, you know, we we then find out uh, Rain basically is looking. Into, they they find Rain and Domon after Domon's fight with uh, Schwartz, Schwartz Bruder, the the last fight of the of the the preliminaries. Schwartz Bruder Schwartz is badly hurt. And Domon wants to make sure he's okay. And Rain eventually sneaks in because she's a doctor. She's good at pretending to be a doctor and, you know, should be there. And it turns out that he's a cyborg and it's Kyoji. Domon's brother. Yep. And Who her we dad's know dad. is currently in a comatose state inside the Devil Gundam. Right. We've seen it. Yeah. So, yeah, we now get the actual backstory. <laughs> So that whole thing with the holograms that they showed to Domon, yeah, that was a lie. Rain didn't know about this either. Uh, yeah, so, yes, the Devil Gundam was not originally called the Devil Gundam, it was originally called the the Ultimate Gundam. It was being built by uh, Kyoji and Domon's father to help rebuild the Earth. So the self-replication, self-repair, modi- and self- self-modification self for things are there to help it re-terraform the Earth to make it a good place to live again. Because it wasn't originally called the Devil Gundam. It was called the Ultimate Gundam. As I said, yeah. So, but the military... Uh, so we forgot to mention uh, the military leader guy, Ulbe. Ulbe. Um, who uh, has a partial metal mask because, you know, he's not evil. Because he's totally it's, not a char clone. It's Gundam. He's the worst you need char somebody clone. wearing a mask. It's yes. Gundam. You have to have someone wearing a cl- mask. There's always a char clone. This is the worst char clone. I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. He what? is the worst at being char ansible. Probably, yeah. So, yeah, he oh, he's not very good at being char ansible. He's a competent Gundam pilot, and that's it. Like, he's a skilled pilot. That is literally it. So at any rate, yeah, so he and Mikum and Rain's dad Rain's dad basically out of jealousy because dear lord Domon's dad is really good at this shit. Uh, basically, you know, worked with Ulbe to, because Ulbe, the military wanted the, the ultimate Gundam for, you know, hey, it's a self-repairing, self, self-replicating, self-modifying super Gundam. Dear lord, this would be the, the ultimate weapon. I mean, he's not wrong. He's not wrong, but he's, you know... Missed the point. Yeah, did. So they show up to take it. Uh, Kyoji is like, yeah, no. They're, they're all like, no. And Ulbe is the one who sh- actually shoots Domon's mom. Kyoji gets pissed off and, you know, basically, you know, and Kyo- Kyoji basically runs away with the Devil Gundam, which is damaged and crashes into Earth, where its programming is, where its com- AI, its, its, you know, computers are damaged and its programming is corrupted. So it no longer wants to reform it no longer well it still wants to help heal the earth but it goes all ultron <laughs> yes so it, yeah. as, as, as in in finest science fiction tropes it says okay i must protect the planet humanity are a threat to the planet i'll destroy humanity 
Also, I'm going to make the planet awesome and just like a total Giger, Giger had sex with um, Dolly and that'll be the Earth now. Go. <laughs> so, yeah. Not even wrong. Like No, you you're, you're not. You're, you're really not. So that's the... And so, you know, and it turns out that we... What happens is... What happened was is that um, Kyoji is... The Schwartz, Schwartzbruder, the Schwartzbruder crew, Kyoji, is a DG Cell robot that Kyoji's soul has gone into for some reason. And Kyoji's so, real body is power of the Devil Gundam, but his soul is basically not there anymore. Did they actually come out and say soul, or just like like personality and grandma? No, no, they said soul. Yeah, well, they said no. soul. Okay. Oh, no, that's, no, no. That's even dumber than I thought, but okay. Just saying. <laughs> they may have said spirit. I don't remember. But it was very much not... Per- it, it, they did not you will be my tech. reflection. <laughs> so, yeah. And basically, so he showed up in Neo-Germany because he's... The, basically, he's like, okay, well, I've got to stop the double Gundam. Uh, my brother's coming down to stop me. So I'm going to have to go in disguise. I'll help out Germany and I'll train help train Do- Doman so he can actually beat the double Gundam. With my help. Because... Uh, it, it, because this is the trope, guys. Let's be real. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Unsurprisingly, basically everything goes the way you would expect at this point, and Domon defeats the Devil Gundam again. And defeats Master Asia. Master Asia actually, lo- do- actually passes away. Yes. Yep. But, you know, not before he actually is able to explain what his motivation for working with the Devil Gundam was, which is... Basically, he's like, yeah, humanity is really shit, and look at even the even this perfect this you know this you know reduced damage worth substitute that Gundam fight is ruining Earth. Yeah, look at what the, the, it's one of the themes. You know, it's like Domon as he's traveling around, he fight, he always ends up in the slums of the cities that he's in, and like meeting those that are impoverished and a bit like literally episode one. Like one of the one of the first characters we meet is the police chief of the local of the, of the local uh, in Rome. precinct in Rome, and he's like literally his entire message is these fucking Gundam fighters coming down and treating treating our world like their playground while they fight these stupid wars just to decide who up there gets to be in charge and we're the ones down here suffering. Literally, message one of episode one. Yep. And it comes home to roost right here. Yep. <laughs> Master Asia, of course, goes a little bit far. It's like, yep, we gotta wipe out all oh, we gotta wipe out humans on Earth. It's just nope. Nope, 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 nope. Humans suck. Devil Gun will rebuild things, and Domon's like, yeah, but humans actually evolved Earth, like evolved on Earth. We're part of nature, dude. And Master Asia's like, oh fuck. Nah, I I guess I'm not in favor of it. He's like, yeah, that's a technicality, but let's face it, I'm not going to be alive long enough to debate this fact. <laughs> <laughs> Master Asia basically agrees, basically comes to agree yeah. with me. He actually is like, yeah, okay, you make a point, humanity probably shouldn't be wiped out. So, the fact that you won is not actually pissing me off, I can die in peace. Okay, okay, now I die now. Yay, dead, thud. And he gets to see the shuffle lines again, hooray. Yeah, he becomes a false ghost or Basically, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so, by the way, there are still five episodes left. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens at this point? Um, well, Ellen B has been rescued, but she's kind of out of it. Um, and Neo Tokyo shows up and takes the Devil Gun body and flies it back up into space. See, at this point, we've de- defeated the Devil Gun three times. Twice no so far. Th- oh, twice, sorry. And no one has thought, you know what, let's destroy that shit while it's there. No. <laughs> well, they, we didn't have time the, either time, Gav. Uh, Both close. times. Okay, we've destroyed the Double Gundam, and now Dolan has to race back to Hong Kong, race back to Hong Kong to fight in the tournament. Yeah, that will make sense. Okay, we defeated the Double Gundam. Okay, fine. Everybody's not dead. This is great. And why has oh, Neo Tokyo shown up and is taking the Double Gundam away? Okay, they're going to destroy it. Nope, we're going to research it. And we're totally not going to plug someone else into it and re- 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 resurrect it. Just, nope, not at just all. Just eat it into the sun, please. Nope, because Ulbe has a plan for it. That's that plan is to rule the universe. Yes, <laughs> always to rule the universe. Yep. 
And so he he basically goes on full uh, you know full uh, military coup. He he <laughs> he announces, "Yes, Japan have won the uh, the 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 Gundam tournament, Gundam fight tournament, and now we are in charge. And as a, as such, our first order of business is to abolish any further Gundam fight tournaments." All right. Well, we'll go to war with you. Well, you see about that. I have the double Gundam on my side now because uh, I just plugged Rain into it. You did what now? <laughs> so, to be here's what happened. Miko, Doctor Mikamura goes back with him because he kind of has to, and Rain go, leaves Doman behind because she feels really guilty about all the shit that her dad put Doman through, and feels that she can't be but be with Doman anymore because she it, it, this is her this, this is her fault also. This is the first and only time in the show Rain is being stupid. Mm. Legitimately, it is... Well, uh... Okay. Oh, that Tachi in the chat mentions one other thing. Domon gets Funsaki. Yes, he gets the, he gets the magic space horse. With its own Gundam. <laughs> it's how he gets into space to chase after yes. Rain. So, yes. basically... He rides the horse. But Dolman's like, okay, well, Rain basically left a message basically saying, don't come after me. I, you know, I can't be with you. I'm sorry. And Dolman's like, well, she doesn't want to be with me. She feels, thinks she's better... He takes it as she's better off without him. She means it. No, you're better off without me. They're both being stupid. Now, this is the Norman's normal state. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually it takes basically the entire shuffle lines and then Alan B basically going, you goddamn moron, go get her. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and Norman going, now, wait, I should go get her. Now, meanwhile, unfortunately, Ulbay has been reading the, the cliff notes from the, the, the president of Neo Tokyo. Yep. And the whole thing about, you know, the, the the Devil Gundam needing a pilot, and it gets a little bit cringe here. Oh, just a little. It get, no, it doesn't <laughs> get a little cringe. It gets very cringe here. Holy so basi- fuck. So basically, Master Asia's plan was to put Domon in. Yes. Because and, he wanted to put the best fighter in there. Yes. And then, um, I forget, I keep forgetting his name. It's Cheng. Yeah. <laughs> he has the idea of putting uh, Alan B in. And it turns out from his readings that Allenby would have actually been more powerful. And the reason for this is because women give life, therefore they provide more power for the Devil Gundam to reproduce. I mean, sure, I guess. I can the... Okay, so here's the thing. I can see where they came up with the idea. It's still yeah. really cringy and awful. A <laughs> little bit. And it is the one, one and only time that Rain is absolutely straight up damseled. Yes. Yep. Like, they full on fucking Nadesco her. They turn her into a statue. To be fair, it's a sexy chrome statue inside a mechanical vagina. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> not kidding. <laughs> I wish she was. Um, uh... And, but she is, she is running the Devil Gundam. Like, and because she is, you know, tormented and feels like she can't be with Domon. She is trying to keep Doman away from her. So Doman can't actually help her. And so we go into the big final thing. Doman tries to get into space on his little rocket pod, but Chang shows up in the remnants of one of the Devil Gundam special Gundam things to blow up his flip Doman Doman's not falling, which way Funsaki shows up, and he kicks Chang's ass. It's great. And rides <laughs> Funsaki in the robot, in Funsaki's robot, into space. Yeah, it turns out Funsaki, it's it's a horse Gundam, but its alternate form is also a space transport. So yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a drop pod without the walls. It's just the boosters. So yeah, don't one rides in, surfs into space on Funsaki's I, uh, booster go, form. Don't one rides into battle on a white charger. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah. And eventually, Nastasha basically shows up with the ship, the prison ship that the uh, Argo's crew were on. To basically say, yep, you guys need to lift into space so that you guys can help Dolman out? And they're like, yeah? Sweet. Let's go. All right, everyone get your Gundams on board. We're going. Because Nastasha is awesome. <laughs> Nastasha is awesome. She's like, she so, actually... oh, this is important. She And Argo's like, wait, you do this? What about the government? What about them? Oh, also, here's your crew. What? Also, take the bomb off. What? Also, those manacles you've been wearing the whole show are off. What? You? Why? Because... Fuck these guys. Let's go beat up the Devil Gundam. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, won't you might get in trouble with the government? Yeah, if I do, fuck it. I'll join your crew. <laughs> Argo's like, what? It's like, because well, the big right thing then. is, before that, it's very clear that the two of them have developed feelings for each other. Like, yeah. yeah. Because she's gone through a character arc. Mm. 
she was very much like 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 Soviet political officer at first and as like like goddamn commissar will shoot you in the head for running away kind of uh Soviet character now she is just like goddamn revolutionary yes I am gonna go fight the devil Gundam no I'm not taking off the uniform I look good in it <laughs> yeah <laughs> So yeah, the Shuffle Alliance make it into space by hitching a ride on the side of this this, this transport ship. Yes, with all the, the the Shuffle Alliance's support crews on board the ship. Yes, which leads to some they, hilarious bits. Yes, and they're obviously they're having the whole fight with like the these the tentacles that the Devil Gundam's trying to trying to produce. Um, we should we should point out the Devil Gundam actually subsumes and absorbs all of Neo Japan. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah basically. The, the 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 actual population oh, managed to get. I want to mention the... one awesome moment when Neo when Neo the Neo USA decides, okay, fuck Neo Japan. We're detaching <laughs> the battle section of Manhattan from our, from here, and the battle station Manhattan. And <laughs> yes. the Statue of Liberty will fire a wave motion gun from the torch. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. <laughs> it doesn't work, but it's amazing. <laughs> It's not Probably actually a wave motion gun. It could have been gun. more American. It's a bit like Summer Spectral AK-47s and hamburgers. <laughs> if it, it wasn't a wave motion gun for the very simple reason that the Devil Gundam stopped it. Yes. <sighs> but it's your. It's sort of fill the wave motion gun niche. Wave motion gun, wave motion gun niche. But it, it. It's closer to the Yamato Ken from Starcraft. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, it's, it is Battle Station Manhattan, and it is hilarious. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, long story short, uh, the fight goes on. Things look bad because the Devil Gun is attacking Earth. When Neo Sweden basically says, okay, everybody, all Gundam pilots on Earth, hop on, ride these rockets into space to fight the Devil Gundam. Literally, you see, just like fucking hugging a missile. <laughs> <laughs> Literal cross rockets. They're riding him like the friggin' um, what's his face from Doctor Strange Love. But going amazing. up. But going up. <laughs> but going up. <laughs> so Literal Alan cross rockets. I love it. <laughs> so Alan being the dude who piloted the Mand- Mand- Mandala Gundam, who was an assassin and evil, but is decided. But after fighting Dolma, decided to walk the path of righteousness. He's come back to help defend the Earth. As part of his redemption arc, which you With know, was... armies of copy and paste, like basically everyone that we like met and like was a good guy and has survived, um, comes back. Like even the I, I can't remember which which country it was. Now was it Iceland? The Mermaid Gundam. That was uh, that, that was, was that was uh, n- that was no the the Mermaid Gundam was Denmark. Right, right. Right, yes. Norway had the Viking Gundam, yes. which unfortunately was extremely lame. I'm disappointed in it, but that showed up yeah. too. Yep. So all the all the all the finalist Gundams all showed up with like hundreds of copy and paste slash variations. The the, the like, big thing is that there were two specifically they mentioned are were mass produced, which was yep. the Mermaid Gundam and the Nether Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Dio De- <laughs> Dio obvious. Netherlands firing <laughs> the Nether Gundams one through forty four. You <laughs> see all these like <laughs> fucking glad uh, um windmills just launch like rockets across <laughs> arms and legs. Fucking <laughs> squadrons of windmills. But it's like you're, you're looking at you're looking at like Neo. Uh, what did you say? Denmark. Yeah. And like yeah. yeah, you've got the mermaid Gundams, then you've got the fucking crabs, the octopus, <laughs> yes. the. You know, it's like what? It's amazing. <laughs> Why are they all fish? So, the Shuffle Lions has a big showdown with uh, Ulbe in his combined all of the Super Gundam minus the one that got blown up on Earth uh, into one big Gundam powered by the Devil Gundam to fight them. And there's a big fight. And the Shuffle Lines wins by working as a team and comboing them to death. Because yep. I, I, I want to reiterate, I fucking love that. It is not yeah. the prote- it is not just Domon who beats him. It is the entire Shuffle Lines has to team up to beat him. Yes. It is and it's great. Not just, yeah, and, and like a lot of these shows, they would have just done that literally. They would have all lent Domon their power. That's how they team up. It's like, no, they individually did things to win this fight. Yep. And they all did a combo move together to do it. Like it's, we're all doing these super burning fist, bur- burning, erupting, shining, burning finger. Yeah, 
We're not sure how all the other suits do it because we don't see any evidence of them having heat engines in their hands, but they do. Yeah, well, they're to all. Be fair, <laughs> to be we fair, we have no idea how Argo creates a Gaia crush where he punches the ground and like a wave of spikes comes up out of the earth. Fair, <laughs> but he fair. does it. <laughs> yeah, basically, they, it turns out the shuffle lines are all able to copy each other's super moves at this point, yep. which they hinted at earlier. Mm-hmm. Like they keep doing shit like this, where it's like they hint at this sort of thing and it comes back later. It's like, oh, well, like that seems like an ass pull. Them... Oh no, wait, they actually hinted at that earlier, didn't they? That seems like an every... ass pull. No, they hinted at that earlier. The only ass pull is literally the shuffle alliance saving the the old shuffle alliance saving the new shuffle alliance. Yeah, yep. that's the only he... ass pull in the show. Like every single one of them, including Allenby as well, on top of that, all get a variation of Dolmon's catchphrase. Yep. So despite the. F- <laughs> Yeah. They defeated they've defeated Old Bay, but unfortunately Rain is still like running things. So Dolan has to get to Rain. And and save Rain. And basically say, okay, well, you blew up the power plant, which is our plan. That didn't work, which means, well, you're gonna have to kill Rain. I'm not killing Rain. Okay, fair. But you might have to. Get to her and see if you can save her. If you can't, then you know. Boo. Yeah, by so, this point we've all, we've freed we've freed Dolan's father. Who's now giving him tech specs and like, advising how to do all this? Yep. Um, but raising the stakes, you know, um, the Devil Gundam's actually trying to reach out with his tentacles to grab Earth and literally start destroying it. Um, like you see, you see, like one tentacle hit hit land, an energy wave goes through it, and you start seeing bodies. Yeah. Just float. There's an entire city wiped out. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Basically, like. They eventually realize that it get it through Domon. Domon. The problem is that she doesn't. She she she's you know she's shielding you away from her because she she she's you know, and basically it's like oh she doesn't thinks I can't, she thinks she can't be with me. Fuck! What do I do? Tell her you love her, you goddamn moron. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, and, okay. Which one? He proceeds to give her a speech where he's like, look, look I'm a goddamn moron. <laughs> I am dumb. I have no idea how to express affection. This is the please, most intelligent Please speech. understand what I say. I don't know what I'm doing. I love you. Did I do it right? I don't know. <laughs> That's the most intelligent and self-aware speech that Domon gives throughout the entire show. But yep. it's actually legitimately a heartwarming, sweet speech. It's really good. Yes. Yep. And it basically gets, and Rain's like, oh my god, thank you, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Which way she comes leaping out of the, she basically frees herself from the Devil Gundam. Um, and Dolan throws his cape to her to, you know, so she, because she's naked. And uh, it turns into this remarkably awesome red like evening gown. Like, what the yes. fuck? <laughs> holy oh, shit, she like, looks holy great. Shit, how much did you pay for that evening gown? Evening yeah. gown? This is just my boyfriend's cape. What? <laughs> <laughs> the ending is pure on bullshit of the highest order. And it's, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it is glorious. They do the speech to, to basically finish off the Devil Gundam. And through the power of love, <laughs> they channel out the King of Hearts in his majestic pink glory to smite the Devil Gundam. With a heart-shaped beam straight through its chest. Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Utterly glorious. And, you know, so all the Gundam fighters who come up basically have basically decided, okay, we are now an alliance of Gundam fighters who basically like, yeah, fuck all these stupid nation shit. We're going to protect Earth and humanity. And fuck y'all. Y'all are being stupid. Figure out a different way to do the stupid government thing. Have an election or something, you assholes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll protect Earth. And you get, like, brief little, um, like, basically a, a card showing, like, the, the various uh, Gundam fighters and, and their um, support teams. I swear to God, Argo gets the best one because he's actually <laughs> smiling, has lipstick on his cheek, and behind him to his right is Natasha with the cat that just ate the bird look on her face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and his crew behind her. Yeah. Yes. And it's just perfect. That's all I needed for the ending. I'm happy. <laughs> Argo's like, well, holy fuck. And Renner's like, yep, got my man. <laughs> and Chimney's got you know his got got his 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 his, his bunny crew you know bunny girl you know his, his uh you know bridge bunnies with him. Be- yep. they're basically the bridge bunnies from from Robotech. They absolutely are. I mean, one of them is literally called Bunny. Yeah. Yes. They're there. They're great. And they're they're all, they're they're like, yep, this is our dude. And he's like, I got no objections. 
So I say she is yeah. driving his his mentors nuts and is you know in communication with the girl the the girl the girl he met in Hong Kong, which is awesome yep. actually. That's a, that was also a good little bit. That little that, that was a that good that was a good little side quest they had. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and George is gone back to Neo France with his with the princess. Yep, because they're a thing now. Because you know it's George. He's going to have the most boring ending. Yep. <laughs> and Dolan and and Rain go off and go to be awesome somewhere together because Dolan's like, yep, I'm done with the stupid Gundam fight thing. Fuck y'all. I'm going to go off and be a martial arts teacher somewhere and teach some kid how to be awesome. All right, teach some kid how to fight with his gunpla. Yeah. I'll teach someone, I'll yeah. teach this kid how to talk with his, to, 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 to communicate with, with their with fists. fists. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So how are you to support yourself? Support myself? My wife's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> She's a doctor and a mechanic. <laughs> I'm going to take care of the house and just teach martial arts on the side because it's fun. I know how to cook. Yeah, it turns out Doman's actually a decent cook. Yeah. Not as good as Saisaji, who is the best cook in the show. Right. But Doman's like, a decent cook. Doman's a decent cook, and, like, you, it's very clear, like, I, like after the show, Rain is going to be bringing in the money, and Doman's going to be watching the house, and he is totally okay. He would totally he be okay with that. He is absolutely cool with that. <laughs> I mean, I can't blame him. <laughs> Wait, I've got a really good... I, I, I it's like, yeah, I can... I have the it. smartest chick on the show... And I get to just hang out in the apartment. I'm okay with that. <laughs> like, I have to clean and cook and teach, and I get to teach people martial arts. Sweet. And Rain is awesome. And my wife, and my girlfriend slash wife slash whatever is fucking awesome. Sweet. So that guy's her fault. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it kind of make. Oh, I mean, I know I've pieced it together already, but then it's like, and it's so obvious, but yeah. It's like I ends up piloting the fucking burning Gundam. Yes, he does. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sekai is literally Domon, but in Bill really Fighters. Is. So that's that's the other thing. Again, uh, it's it's a really inconsequential thing, but it is something important if you're ever looking this show up. Um, God Gundam. Yeah, if you're looking at that in the dub, it wasn't called the God Gundam. It's known as the Burning Gundam in the West because Devil Gundam was okay, but God, <laughs> no, sir. I'm, I'm going to be honest, like, this is at the end of the whole satanic panic thing. Like, you can yeah. get away with calling the bad guy the devil Gundam, but there's no way you're going to get those friggin', like, moral panic yahoos to sign off a of calling also, anything Also, I'm, I'm actually going to say it. Burning Gundam is a better evolution evolutionary name from Shining Gundam than God Gundam I is. actually yeah. agree. I yeah. absolutely do. I think Burning Gundam, God is, Gundam actually- is sillier. But it God plays Gundam, off the devil uh, Gundam, Gundam better. better. It, it plays yeah, off the devil the Gundam better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like if it wasn't for that, the previous Gundam that this is clearly an evolution of was the Shining Gundam. Then, Shining to Burning makes so much goddamn sense, especially mm-hmm. the way it fights. Like, yep, yep. Ah! <laughs> but the God Gundam is a foil for the devil Gundam. Yeah, that also makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So yeah, that's. Mobile Fighter G Gundam. We got final thoughts on this. Start with Eric, then Gav, then me. So this is the most '90s show that was ever '90s during the '90s. I'm, it like <laughs> it's got pacing issues. It's got like it is completely over the top, completely unironically like and, and convinced of its own bad attitude. Like so very earnestly convinced of its own bad attitude. This is every Dark Age '90s comic you ever saw. But, like, with none of the angst. <laughs> um, it's... Everything is bonkers. Everything is insane. Doman is either, like, growling and whiny or shouting at the top of his lungs. Rain's... Okay, Rain is not the most 90s girl ever. She dresses like the most 90s girl ever. But she's totally, like, this omni great, uh great thing. Mm-hmm. The... Yeah, I, this show is insane, and I think I love it, and I think I hate it both at the same time. I'm not sure. You should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the thing. This this show is wildly entertaining. Um, but wait, the more you think, the more I think about it, you know that show it reminds me of what? Yu-Gi-Oh. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Hours and hours, and and to, and to a degree, Dragon Ball. Hours and hours of very little happening and things that are, I suppose they're important and they add up at the end, but you could quite easily just get the crib notes of this show and, and you know, it does not need to be 49 episodes. No, 
Oh no! Th- this show this needs be an editor. Like this should be twenty six. This show needs an editor. Like I need another drink. He says, pouring himself some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this it is so full of filler and so full of overly stretched out moments. It just did not need to happen. Um, uh, it, you can you, in, in places you can even feel like like there's there's parts during the first half where they could have quite easily put in revelations that were discovered during the training arc, for example, mm-hmm. that you can tell they were deliberately leaving out because those episodes feel a little bit extra empty so that they had something for those later episodes. Yep. And, yeah, it just is so, so... This is one of those shows that you can quite easily just go, okay, tell me the key points and you'll follow it through. Like I say, everyone knows Master Asia, everyone knows the God Gundam, God, really everyone sorry. knows Shining Finger. You know, it's those those it's got those <sighs> key points within the Gundam universe and within the, the the fan base that it has its place. It is not as good as a lot of people will tell you. And it is, and, and I, I to this day say it is not a good example of a Gundam show. Oh God, no, 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 no. Um, I, I want to amend my thing briefly. Yeah, this is a show you will hate if you try to watch it on your own because I did, mm-hmm. and you will love if you watch it with friends. Both Eric and Peter both said they they tried watching this themselves and didn't get past episode three or four. I I, I got to say, I got I got to five, I got through the first five. The first five. Yeah. Minutes. I probably okay. Here's the thing. I know I could have gotten through it. Because I'm capable of getting through. All right, so here's my th- my my take on it. Um, I I am now unabashedly a fan of the show. I love the show. Oh, it has got yeah. flaws. Mm. It is definitely a flawed show. But I adore it for because I my opinion the good outweighs the bad by a massive massive quantity. It's, it's one when of it, the bad parts are merely. And eh, that's unfortunate. As opposed mm. to the good parts, which are about as hype as fuck as you're it's, ever it's, gonna fucking get. Like, holy fuck, some of the shit that goes on in this show is just like, holy fuck, that was amazing. It's one of those shows that you can't just watch a couple of episodes and make a judgment. You have to see the whole thing, step back, and look at the big picture. Unfortunately, to do that, you've got 50 episodes. To I, I will through. say this. If you can't get past, if you can't get to episode six, if you're like, feel like, I'm just, if you lose patience by episode five, you're not going to be able to get through the entire show, even with the good bits. Because if you can't get to episode six, you won't get to episode twelve. Yeah, and, and then episode, episode 12, twelve is where everything turns. Mm. The show improves; it, the qual- show's quality basically doubles the second Master Asia shows up. <laughs> it really does. It's not just that Master Asia is on screen; it is literally when the show basically says, "Okay." We are done pussyfooting around. We are going full force forward until they get to the training arc, in which case they put the brakes. At which point they're climbing the hill again. Yeah. Before it goes back crashing down, and then it doesn't slow down again. Like even if the terminal arc is the final term arc is slower than the rest of the show, than the the, the really hype stuff, but it's still a good, well paced terminal arc. It's repetitive, but at least it moves at a clip. And it has some, it has some really good character bits in it. Like, yes, it has the Sai Sai Chi episode, which is fan fucking tastic. Like that's really good. Yep. Uh, the uh, here's the other important bit about the about Mobile Fighter G Gundam, is dis- as hype as the as this show can get, and as crazy and weird as the fights are not tactical fights in any way, shape, or form. No. Yeah, they, they are, are super robot s- fights. They are they're not even super good super robot fights. They are just, they are entirely character fuck yeah moment fights. There's no tactics or anything like that. It's literally just, I am awesome, I smash you. <laughs> I'm losing, I'm losing, but now I'm winning, I win. Majority of them are, Domon gets beat down by a tactic he's never seen before, Shining Finger win. Yeah. Now, now here's the thing. Like, I'm probably never going to watch this show on my own. I will absolutely watch it again with friends. Sure. This is very much a social show for me. I, I, would, I, totally, I totally respect that, and I totally get it. I would, I, I'll say this, I would prefer to watch it with people than watching it solo. I think I could probably watch it solo, but I would start at level, episode 12. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, with friends, this show is amazing. It is a lot of fun. You will love it. By yourself, you're going uh, to struggle. 
there's there are good odds you will. I will say this. Yeah. It is not a guarantee you'll struggle, but I think the odd it, the odds of you having trouble getting through it on your own are significantly higher. Yeah. Now it might not be your cup of tea even with friends. Like I totally respect that because yep. it has pacing issues, and it is stupid. <laughs> this is not a deep show. This is playing in the sprinklers and having a blast doing it. <laughs> yeah. It is a hot fucking day. There's a fountain and sprinklers and you run around to that. You're not going swimming. You're not diving. You're just having a fucking blast. You might have and you probably have a super soaker. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sort of shit this show is. And it's great for that. It is it is a popcorn show. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is for all of my saying about, like, the fights have no depth in them and they don't, there are some legit good character bits in here. Like, legit. As it, Nastasha has a character arc. Rain is just a great character throughout the entire show. The amount of pathos the managed to ring out of Allenby in no fucking time is kind of astonishing. Yeah. Like, you feel really bad for her when she when she gets kidnapped, when she gets taken, when she gets drafted, dragooned into be, joining, joining the Devil Gundam team. Like, I felt bad for her. She sounds so tormented. The voice actress does a great job at sounding really tormented when they turn on the berserker mode on her. Yeah. Like, it... It's a good... It is not a great show by any stretch of the imagination. But I adore it. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad I've watched it now. Yeah. But, uh, no, no, this is not... This is not Gundam. This is not a Gundam... A, this is Gundam... It's not Gundam in name only, because that is... That, that isn't doing it... It is... It is co- Gundam. It is Gundam cotton candy. It is, it is the Gundam branded cotton candy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it is light. It is airy. It is terrible for your teeth, but it's kind of addictive. <laughs> <laughs> and it's best when you're with a group of friends at a, te- at a at a cheap carnival. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> it's weird that Build Fighters is literally the bridge between G Gundam and actual Gundam. It really is. <laughs> is it weird that G- that B- Build Fighters has has actual better Gundam fights than this does? No, because this was in the nineties. That's actually a fair point. <laughs> That's actually a fair point. <laughs> so yeah, do we recommend Mobile Fighters G Gundam? I think the answer is yes, especially with yeah. friends. Yes, yeah. absolutely. If you insist on trying to watch it on your own, do so. But be aware that it's going to be a struggle until you get to episode 12. And even at its most serious... <laughs> that... it, it, like, yeah. Well, like I said, if you're a fan of Gundam, even if it's most serious, you are not getting as serious as Gundam gets. No. Not even close. Not getting, not getting anywhere close. <laughs> you are not getting Biscuit in this show. No. And I'm glad <laughs> that you don't. <laughs> There are a few oh. characters who do pass away. Not everyone lives. No. Yeah. Like, for instance, as we said, Master Asia dies. Kyoji dies. Um... To be fair, um... well, and a couple a couple of the evil Gundam fighters as well. Yeah, a couple of the evil Gundam fighters do too, yeah. But yeah, it's it's fun. And here's the other thing is, for all we're saying, like, that we're, we're, we're sort of hedging our, our love of this show, I also totally understand why this might be someone's favorite show. Like I totally no, yeah, get absolutely, that. I oh, absolutely yeah. get why, why why people would feel that way. Like I can this, definitely see that. Yeah, if it if it clicks you that way, it will. I could totally understand why this is someone's favorite show. It totally makes sense. Like because it is, it is a roller. It is literally a roller coaster ride. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> for all, because it's got moments where it's got that slow climb up the hill, but then it just goes, and then it's slow again, and then it goes. It's like, it's mad. It is mad in all the right ways. I just wish it was more consistent and was tighter paced. Yeah. That literally, my only real complaint about it is the it, major complaint about it is the pacing. Like, oh god, the pacing. Plus, if it was tightened up, it only need one inch, one intro thing. Oh yeah, the second. You know, in, also, the second intro was terrible. It's terrible. Second, yeah. Second intro is, is the garbage. first intro is amazing. <laughs> Shining finger. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that is Mobile Fighter G Gundam. 
we had a blast. It is it was worth the time we put into it. Honestly, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, so Eric, what are we doing next? All right, given the state of life, the universe, and everything, I figure we're gonna do something light and fun and absurd involving schoolgirls. So we're gonna get to Nichijo. 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 I don't know how to pronounce Japanese words. That is totally I think fair. After all this time, I would learn. <laughs> uh, so yes, Nichijo, my ordinary life. Yes. Um, I have heard the show is hilarious and weird. I have never watched it. I am looking forward to. It. I've been meaning to check it out at some point. I am looking forward to doing so. It, it's exactly on my my um on my list of things I have not had a chance to watch, but have wanted to. And um, yeah, from what I've seen, it is gorgeous and bizarre. And yeah, I kind of need to see it. Alrighty. <laughs> so we're doing Nietzsche Joe, My Ordinary Life next. So uh, now for something that'll be different. that'll be less time. <laughs> yes, we'll get through that one in probably at most a month to be my guess. Yeah, but it might be yeah. less depending on how 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 quick. If it catches us the right way, we might churn through it faster. Yes, we have done so. We did caught the right answer in a week. <laughs> yeah, and that was twelve episodes. Yeah, we did caught the right answer in a night. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm just saying it was a week between episodes on that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because uh, dear Lord. We watched episode eight and we're like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, caught on the right answer. Well, basically, it's the normally we'd have tried to split it into two weeks, but like it hooked it hooked Gav and Eric enough to go like we noticed we also realized we we're on episode eight, and then episode eight yeah. happened, and, er- and Eric's like, okay, I have to see what happens next because what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> what? Like, what? It was. It was put it this way. It was like four thirty five a.m. in the morning for me, and I was like, fuck it, next episode. <laughs> and then you was oh right the rest of Cotto yeah. Right Answer is unfortunate and yet we still <laughs> recommend that show yep it tells you how good the, fir- good the first eight episodes are anyways yeah. that's gonna do it for tonight folks thank you so much for listening hope you enjoyed the episode and uh, we'll be back with Nietzsche Joe in a little while a few weeks take care everybody have a wonderful wonderful rest of your week bye bye <laughs>